Okay. One thing we all do is we ask questions. Those of you who have kids know that kids especially are going to ask an awful lot of questions. I was around eight to nine years old. I was on a Boy Scout hike out in Wolverine Canyon just outside of town here, and I happened to find my first fossil. With a little bit of investigation, I found that this fossil for, was from a little animal that lived in an ocean that covered Idaho more than 300 million years ago. It excited me then, and I still find it exciting that this little animal that lived right where we stand now lived in what was also essentially an alien world so long ago. Ever since I found that fossil, I've had the question, who was here before? I don't mean regarding people. I mean what animals were here 10, 100, 500 million years ago. In pursuit of this question, as soon as I was old enough to drive, I took my little Geo Metro all over the mountains of eastern Idaho. I collected trilobites out down near Bear Lake. I collected other ocean-dwelling fossils in the Blackfoot Mountains out at Mackey Reservoir along the Blackfoot River. I collected plants near salmon. I never quite got rid of the fossil bug. When I started at Idaho State University as an undergraduate, I found the one big question regarding the fossil history of Idaho was what dinosaurs we had here in Idaho. Everything that was known then, most of what we know now, comes from a layer of rock called the Wayan Formation. It's about 95 to 100 million years old. It's named after the metropolis of Wayan out in Caribou County. It occurs in eastern Bonneville and Caribou County. Unfortunately, most of the fossils that were had then when I started at ISU were very fragmentary and very few. There was maybe two dozen. They consisted of isolated eggshell fragments, a few teeth, a few isolated bones, and two partial dinosaur tails that you see right there. The problem is, even with this modest abundance of Idaho dinosaurs, only two of these fossils were actually identifiable to a specific sort of dinosaur. They didn't tell us a lot. And they're very exciting. You see those two fossils right there. Two teeth, no bigger than your thumbnail, both from plant-eating dinosaurs. The one on the left from an animal called a nodosaur, the guy with the spikes. The one on the right from an animal called an iguanodont. So I made the goal there as an undergrad at ISU to see what I could do to find out more about Idaho dinosaurs. First, how do you go about looking for a dinosaur? It's not like you see in the movies, you don't go out and randomly dig a pit. First, you need to find rocks of the right type. You need rocks made from mud, sand, or silt that could have buried a dinosaur when it wandered too close to a river during a flood or died out in a floodplain. Also, you need rocks of the right age. If you're looking for dinosaurs, that would mean rocks that are around 66 to 225 million years old. Very importantly, you need, need permission. You can't just randomly go out and pick up dinosaurs wherever you please. You'll get in a lot of trouble if you do that. Also, you need to be persistent. It's not easy to find a fossil. Part of this involves what I call the calibrated eye. What I mean by the calibrated eye is you have a mental search image of whatever it is that you're looking for, and you expect that you know what it looks like. As an example, on the left of the slide there, you'll see a bunch of rocks. I took this picture out in the desert of eastern Utah. There's nothing fancy there. I wouldn't blame you for walking right past it. However, if you're a paleontologist, you're going to have an eye calibrated for fossil bone. You might notice those blue rocks you see interspersed among the others, and you'll think, oh, Sometimes fossil bone is blue. I better have a closer look. You might pick it up, see that those rocks have a spongy texture, just like bone marrow, and you'll realize, oh, there's actually fossil bones scattered here. Also, if you think of dinosaurs, stereotypically, they're ridiculously large, so you're going to look for big bones, like you see on the right there underneath my hammer. Unfortunately, Idaho is not a dinosaur hunter's paradise. One of the main problems that we have is the lack of exposed rock. You see on the top of the slide there, out in an area of Bonneville County where I do a lot of my hunting, you probably notice there isn't any rock. That's a problem. Almost all the rock is overgrown with vegetation. The few outcrops we do have, you see the best example I know of there on the bottom, has actually produced, even though it's just a small area, just about five dinosaur skeletons. So we know the rock's really productive, we just wish there wasn't as many plants. Even though we don't have a lot of rock exposed, we know what Idaho was like about 100 million years ago. 
If we could travel back in time and step out of the auditorium here and look off to the west, you'd see a low range of mountains, nothing too different. We'd be standing on a gently inclined floodplain, again, not too different. The fun starts, if you were to go about 20, 30 miles east, you'd be on beachfront property. You'd encounter what's called the Western Interior Seaway. You could go for a swim, the water would be warm. If you're lucky, you'd probably get eaten by something swimming in the water. Now, when I started ISU looking for dinosaurs, just like previous workers, I didn't have a lot of luck. The first few years, I found fragments of bone, hinting at various animals, but absolutely nothing that could tell me what the actual animal was. However, finally, on the hillside you see pictured on the right, my colleagues and myself started to hit pay dirt, and I found my first identifiable Idaho dinosaur. And I brought that bone to show you guys. Let me fish it out here. This vertebra is from the base of the tail of a large sauropod dinosaur. And actually, I'm messing with you. This is from Wyoming. This is totally irrelevant to what I'm talking about. <laughs> the reason I messed with you there is we actually have something pretty special regarding our Idaho dinosaurs. They're all pocket size. You see this bone right here? Fits in my pocket, like I said. Actually, <clears throat> this animal is what's called an erectodromius. Oops, there we go. Maybe. It's the most common Idaho dinosaur. It's very small. Small dinosaurs are usually very rare. We've probably found about 10 to 12 skeletons of this animal, a lot of isolated bones. There's two reasons this animal is very special as far as dinosaurs go. Number one, it's the first known burrowing dinosaur. The specimens found out in Bonneville County, Caribou County, and some of the first specimens actually found out near Lima Peaks, just inside Montana, were found inside fossilized burrows. You can see an example there on the right. Second reason this animal is important, we actually know that it cared for its kiddos. In some of these burrows where we have skeletons of the adults, we've also found skeletons of some of the unfortunate kids. Erecto is not very big. He's about 11 feet long, seven feet of that being tail. And he's about collie-sized. I'll show you an example of a skull here, too. So you can see he's not a very big animal. It's interesting that when we found these animals, it was only after we recalibrated our eyes. I talked about the calibrated eye. We were out there looking for large bones. And as long as we were doing that, we didn't see anything. But as soon as we realized we had these small animals and we started looking, we found their bones all over the place out there. They're fairly common as far as dinosaur fossils can be. The next most common Idaho dinosaur fossil we find is from an animal called an oviraptorosaur. Imagine a chicken. It's going to be about 10 feet tall at the hip. It's got long clawed fingers on his hands. He's got a toothless beak. He's going to bend his semi-long neck down, look at you, make eye contact, and quite possibly he's going to bite your head off. We actually haven't found a single bone from this animal in Idaho. So why do I say we know we had it? Because we found a lot of eggshell, as well as some eggs. On the left there, on the bottom, you can see a set of eggs. They're not pretty, they're crushed. You can see a drawing above to help you understand what you're looking at. These eggs are ridiculously huge. They're about 14 inches long. Imagine eggs that size. The way we know they're from an oviraptorosaur is in China, in rocks of the same age, we found the same sorts of eggs, and there they've been lucky enough to find the babies inside of them. Everyone loves T-Rex. He's a dinosaurian celebrity. I think he's overrated because he gets so much attention. Nonetheless, we do have evidence for ancestors of T-Rex right here in Idaho out of these same rocks, about 95 million years old. We have evidence for a knee-high tyrannosauroid. Imagine a cute one that could maybe chase the paper boy if you had it in your yard. <laughs> Teeth, again, are only about a centimeter long. They're not very big. We do have evidence for a separate tyrannosauroid that would probably be horse size, again, from isolated teeth, about two inches long. You can see him on the left there. 
You're probably all familiar with the raptors from Jurassic Park. We know about these animals from these same rocks again, again from isolated teeth, indicating animals maybe from the size of a crow up to about collie size. The teeth are about a third of a centimeter long to maybe half an inch long. And that was them right there. I'm not good with the clicker. Okay. Next, I mentioned that we have notosaurs known from an isolated tooth at the beginning. We've actually found a lot more dinosaurs related to these uh, notosaurs right here. We have isolated armor plates, teeth. We actually have a partial skeleton of one of these animals that when it's fully prepared and described will represent the largest dinosaur known from Idaho. At least it's represented by actual bones. I mentioned as well what's called an iguanodont that was known from an isolated tooth before. We found a few more teeth from this animal. What's really frustrating is we still haven't found a single stinking bone. We know they were here. I'd love to know more about them and see their skeleton. We're still looking. So you can see over the past decade, we've managed to start to answer the question I had, who was here before? Who was here 95 to 100 million years ago? And we only managed to do that once we recalibrated our eye and started looking for something different than what we expected. Once we started looking for these small bones and small fossils, we said, yes, we do have a lot of Idaho dinosaurs. We don't know nearly as much about them as we'd like, but we have this little bit of evidence. If we could all take a field trip outside of the auditorium again, and go back in time about 100 million years, you guys would probably see some burrowing erectodromius, maybe the little kids poking their heads out of the burrows right here. Maybe off right here, you guys would see some nesting oviraptorosaurs, the big killer chickens. Off in the distance, you'd see some of your plant-eating dinosaurs foraging, and while you're taking in all the nice scenery, you're gonna hear someone behind you, you're gonna turn around, and you're face-to-face -face with that big tyrannosauroid. What really gets me excited about science is you never run out of questions that you can ask. I mentioned Everything that we know about Idaho dinosaurs so far comes from this one layer of rock, the Wayan Formation, from about 95 to 100 million years old. Above and below these rocks are thousands of more feet of rock, representing another 50 million years of dinosaurian evolution. We know there's bones in them. I've seen hints of the bones. But because of how busy we've been in the Wayan, we haven't had a chance to look yet. So you can see, as far as Idaho dinosaurs, there's a lot left to discover about these vanished worlds. And I'm hoping that some of the people that read about our research or see this talk might be inspired to help in this search in the future. Thanks.